Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And this is a review. <laughs> you see what it was already? Okay. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and book on my whole shape. Great place. 4 a.m. Jaybird, Jaybird, dun, 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 dun. And all the goodness. Okay. Do not forget to like, to comment on the video, to share this video on your social media by hitting the little share button. You can also follow me on Instagram and or on Twitter at J underscore leads underscore corner. All of that is in the description box below. I don't feel like putting nothing on this computer screen either. I'm tired. Okay. And always please, J Birds, hit that notification bell because it'll let you know when I have new videos up and all that goodness. Now let's get started on this video. Marriage Madison, you know I feel like it was a quick episode and not much happened. And even the little M's and tea party they had. I was like, that's it? Like, I'm confused on what's going on. But we're going to still see where we can take this. So we first see a little thing with Dr. Hadley and her daughter. Dr. Hadley's daughter, uh, Alana, is growing up so much. And she looks just like her mother, okay? Um, I hope she'll have a mama, her mama attitude. I like this hairstyle on Heavenly. It, it really becomes her. If she can only get that little edge fixed on the side, you know what I'm saying? It like a little ball fade on the side. Like get the, get the hair pushed up about an inch or two to not show that. Like don't push your hair behind your ear if the side is bald. It just looks a little. I need a brush on the side or whatever. But again, her and Alana just go get their nails done or whatever because Alana getting older. She is. That's me picking through. Uh, she getting a little bit older. And, you know, she's like, I was so used to me and her always spending time together. And now that she's 13, about to go to high school, she's always in her room talking to her friends. It's not hanging out with me too much. And I don't like that. I want us to be able to hang out. And, you know, I'm like, Ma, we're not going to be spending that much time together or whatever. So just get over that. So it was a cute little moment, okay? So we see Scott. Dr. Scott, Contessa's husband, he's at home doing things that husbands do. He's taking care of the kids. He's cooking them some food. They have they, 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 um, their dinner and everything. You see the laundry around to be done. So he's at home being Mr. Mom. So Contessa called because she just got in from the airport. She's on her way home. And then she makes a stop at McDonald's, okay? She stops at McDonald's and gets some, some nuggets, some burgers, some pancakes. I'm like... Burgers, pancakes, and nuggets. What kind of that girl? Okay. So, but Scott at home, and he was making like it was steak, asparagus, and some potatoes. Okay, some some mashed potatoes or whatever. So she walked in, mommy, yay! So they're all happy that mommy is home, and she's like, oh my god, there's so much going on. And he like, you brought McDonald's this late? It's na it's like nine oh five. PM, okay, a school night and that. And the kids like, oh my god, you want McDonald's? She giving them French fries, <laughs> pancakes. I'm like, this is not he like, did you think I didn't feed the kids? Like it's nine o'clock at did you think I didn't feel like why would you even ask me if I made food for them? Why don't you bring in McDonald's? I would have had that exact same question. I just laid over a whole hot stove for three children. You walk in with McDonald's at nine PM the kid was happy, of course, but he was like, I just can't believe that or whatever. And the kid like, Mommy, are you sleeping here and not in Nashville? Of course I'm sleeping. Where else would I sleep? In Nashville, okay? So, you know, he like, you know, it's nighttime. I, I, I feed the children. But I thought you needed some help. So the kids went off to bed or whatever. But I thought you need some, You may have needed some help or whatever. You look like you may be, you know, overwhelmed or whatever. It's cold in the kitchen. I'm saying, the dish is not done. He like, well, first of all, I'm saying, hello. Okay, second of all, I feed the kids. That's the fourth load of laundry I was about to do. You know what I'm saying? And I wash the dishes after I put the kids to bed because I had to help them with their homework. Well, you know, and, and there's a thing where a contestant, you can't come to the house complaining about how he's taking care of the kids when you ain't there. You're like, you've been gone all week. Like, I mean, he has to do what he has to do, whatever. He may have his own system. You can't come in complaining because he don't do things how you do things. And you came in with McDonald's at 9 o'clock at night for some children. Mm-mm, mm-mm. So, you know, I'm working hard here. You know what I'm saying? When you're not here, I'm working hard. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm saying, I just, you know, it just look, I just, I told you it would have been easier if you and the kids came with me 
to Nashville. He said, girl, look, what nobody about the fuck? That was you and your hair, brain scheme, or whatever. You said, that was your decision to go. It was our decision. Well, anyway, you made the decision to go to Nashville or whatever, but we wasn't going. Well, you know, we made a decision or whatever. And, you know, I'm like, you know what? Go ahead and have your private time, whatever, because you can get your homework, right? Your homework. Do your homework, whatever. You say, get studying, uh, Tessa. And he walks off. I ain't going to keep doing this shit no more. I'm looking like, oh, Scott is upset. I'm upset. And I mean, it's you can see they have issues where he probably resents her for going. And she feel like I'm going, but you should support me in what I'm doing. And you should also do things how I want you to do things around the house. So if you don't, I'm going to complain. And guess what, Contessa? That's going to cause some turmoil, okay? And I'm like, mm, because he slammed that door. I said, oh. Okay, so we then see Heavenly and Jackie meet up, okay? Heavenly and Jackie talking or whatever, and mainly because, you know, Heavenly feel like, well, Jackie, no, Heavenly is upset because she felt like Simone was disrespectful at Damon's event or whatever, because her and Simone at at odds, and, you know, and Jackie feel like, but now it's messy. It's messy because actually everybody beefing with everybody, if you ask me, okay? So I'm going to upload this one video, y'all. Before the 90 days, okay? Y'all know I be multitasking, but it's late at night so I can get things done. Oh, 45 minute upload. Jesus Christ. Anyway, okay, back to y'all. So, again, it's messy because, you know, Heavenly feels Simone was messy at the event. Whereas Jackie feel like, you know, Cecil's whole joke says comment about... You know, um, I think Mariah cracking a joke. It was it Mariah or someone? I think it was Mariah was tra- cracking a joke that you know somebody need to need to pressure wash Heavenly House and you know having somebody where well, you know you come I can pay you do it or whatever you know what I'm saying and you should get a job. So and Heavenly then went at Cecil. She went at Cecil Stoltz for a joke that he had or whatever. So for that reason, like I feel like you know you that comment that you shot at Cecil did not sit well with Simone so again it's just messy 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 so you know what I'm saying um she's Jackie said she felt like some she <sighs> Jackie said she felt like having I have to come out to see who was talking Jackie said she felt like heavenly should have talked to Simone versus talking to Cecil on Twitter like go after her because she your cast mate like don't go after her, her husband you cannot say negative things about your cast mate's husband or spouse because they feel a certain kind of way or whatever. Had she said something back to Simone, you know, I don't think it would have been a big issue between her and Simone. Anyway, and you, you, and you can't, you shouldn't negatively go after your castmate spouse. I do think any beef should be that of, of, of the ladies. The thing is, the husbands can't be commenting on Twitter either. If you don't want the wife to come back at you. But I do feel like what Cecil posted wasn't really at Heavenly. He he was laughing about something that Mariah said. Like, oh, well, because my wife be over there. Hopefully she's not going to tell me that. Ha, 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 ha. So I think it was a joke that Heavenly just didn't like at that point in time or whatever. So Heavenly said, but I feel like, you know what I'm saying, um, Jackie, you should have taken, you should have accountability because what you said about, um, Mariah, because you know what I'm saying Mariah came at you at the party and you kind of like ignored it as if you never said anything because you know the whole thing with Mariah felt like that Jackie should not have repeated what um, Quad said and she told you that she saw your slip showing, which means she sees how you really is in real life. So basically, they talking because Jackie wants to have an event to where all the ladies can come together and kind of speak their piece on what is bothering them about the group of ladies because it's supposed to be a sisterhood and right now everyone is at odds with someone else and I'm like girl it's just team too much it's really really team too much and I think the only person who has a valid reason to be feeling some, some kind of way is Simone if she feel like her friend Heavenly took stuff she said in, in, in confidant okay and she then went and put about it on Twitter even if we all knew that Cecil wasn't working she didn't have to put it out at that time but I don't think at that time people knew what was going on but girl who cares so we then see a very very serious moment and Toya is going to see um Simone at the office or whatever and so we see she gives Simone her ER paperwork or whatever because Toya was pregnant so Toya was pregnant 
and you know she was about six seven weeks pregnant and she had to go to the er because she was spotting or whatever and she ended up losing the baby so of course condolences to her you know because again no one understands losing kids um it's something hard to, to process no matter how far along the mama was so again she's around six, six or seven weeks so they showed the video of her taking the test showing the kids you know showing your genes so all of them finding out how happy they were and hoping that this will be the girl that they all want so they were very 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 happy and again devastated when she lost the baby so you know she brings up how she hasn't much so any emotion around her son because she does not want her sons to get upset either um she said she asked eugene like well how is he doing and eugene like i'm okay i'm gonna put it on my virtual shelf and my virtual shelf is the place where i put things but i, I put failure so this is a failure for me and i love how simone explained like you know what i'm saying a, a failure means that you failed at something and it's your fault that it didn't go the way you thought it was gonna go um a miscarriage is not a failure because you cannot control that that's not something that you can, you know, that you have any control over, technically, or whatever. Um, you know, it's no one's fault. So that word failure is not a good thing or whatever. Um, and some, I like how Simone, Simone is batshit crazy nine times out of ten. But that one time was the time that she's a doctor. She is always on point. I love how she said, you know, first, as a doctor, I have to make sure that medically, physically, that she is okay. So she, you know, did a whole little ultrasound to make sure that, you know, everything had, you know, flowed out. You know, I don't know. I don't know if she had a DNC at the um, ER, but, you know, they just want to make sure that every all of it had passed through her body. And so she checked her uterus to be sure that everything was good. And that was good. It's like, and then after that, as a friend, I need to be sure that she's okay. Now, no one else knows that she had to be scared except Simone. And, you know, again, we want to just, you know, condolences to, 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 to Toya. So we then see Contessa, Quad, and Heavenly meet up. Now, let me, what is this, what is this picture of this girl? <sighs> I don't like this on Quad. Quad looks funny. It's not a bad cut. The hair looks real, but I don't like blonde hair on Quad. Okay, I, I don't. I also don't like that red hair on her either, but it is what it is. But, you know, it, it, it looks like a whole ball spot right there in the front. I don't like that. It's a cute cut. And it would be cute on someone else. I just don't like quad and blonde hair. Period. Point blank. Um, and right now, she, in this picture, she looks like she's from Whoville. But we're going to digress from that. So, again, Contessa and Quad have me meet up to chit-chat or whatever. Contessa brings up how, you know, I want to change careers. And say I want to go into more public health or whatever. Um, still be a doctor, but have, you know, go into public health. And Scott is upset or whatever. Scott is treating me like I'm just um, to help or somebody he, he has to take care of the kids i'm like but you don't need to take care of the kids like you are in nashville half the week and that's when he has the kids i feel like contessa doesn't understand her husband just still wants his wife around i don't think that he ever wanted her to like not be a mom or not be or not or not be who she wants to be i mean he supported you and you decided that you wanted to not be a doctor at all. And you wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And you then changed around to get about that and wanted to do both. So my thing is, it's, it's like Contessa isn't happy in life. And I think she's she keeps trying to grasp at different things that she thinks will make her happy. And I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's going to come to light soon. But she ain't happy. Because you it's, every six months is something different. Or I don't know. Anyway, quiet then say, you know what, girl? You better make sure that you have some fun of yourself because, you know what I'm saying, these men, they will, they will, you know, leave you, whatever, and just toss you away. I'm like, first of all, you and, and Greg's situation where, you know, y'all divorced and you kind of wasn't, didn't have whatever or whatever, won't be contesting Scott because Contessa's a whole doctor. Like, if, if he leaves her, she has the means to support herself. Not saying Quad didn't, but I feel like Quad was, for lack of a better term, a housewife. So... She didn't have a career, and when when Greg left, it was like, what am I supposed to do now? But she still landed on her feet. But I feel like if Scott and Contessa break up, they're both doctors. She's still a doctor. She still has something that she has been working towards and working on. Like, she is weird. And, and not that a housewife isn't a job, but sometimes if you are a housewife, you, you then do have to figure out, okay, how am I gonna support myself if I'm no if I no longer, no longer have this husband who was paying the bill? So like I think that's the only difference. I'm like, Contessa still has a check. 
coming from somewhere. But I, I digress. Anyway, you know, Kwa brings about she's looking for a man. And she wants him to be long and hard. I said, so that must have been Dr. Gregory with short and soft. Uh, he was. <laughs> That's not nice. Anyway, she's able to say she found the right person. She's good on her own, you know, taking care of herself. Okay, if you say so. You know, Heavenly bring up, she also bring, no, she brought up too how she don't want to be messing around with too many people because she don't want too many spirits up in her body. I said, girl, okay. And Heavenly on, I said, you know, I'm, because Damon, he's my only spirit, girl, please. We know for a fact that you was not no virgin messing with Damon. We, you, you seem like not a virgin, period. And so we see that little thing. And then, you know, we just get to a little tea party or whatever. Now, we do see Aiden and Mariah talking or whatever. And Mariah brings up how she just still does not like how Jackie is now trying to control the narrative and kind of do like a little PR move to where she is trying to not take accountability for repeating what Quad said and not putting the word allegedly in it. You know, you know, Jackie not on the road. She knows this, but she still repeated it. No one knows anything about nothing. Okay, the only thing the only thing a person knows is what they see with their own eyes. Um, and sometimes sometimes even that's not true. But I I, I don't care. We do see Simone and Toya in the car, and Simone brings up how you know I'm just upset with Emily because I talked to her in confidence and I told her things about my what was going on in life or whatever, and then she repeated what I said online. Okay, she went and stabbed me in the back and repeated. Things that was supposed to be, you know what I'm saying, when you vent to your friends, you should be able to vent to friends, and they won't take that and run with it. And I say, well, girl, you never know. Anyway, so we then see Toya talking about how she talked to Eugene, and she told Eugene what Contessa was saying about him being a, the biggest bitch of them all, okay? And I just felt like I'm so tired of fussing with Contessa. Then stop. It's that simple. Then stop. You don't have to fuss with her every single time. And Contessa, the same thing for you. Y'all don't have to fuss. Every single time. I do feel like they both take jabs at each other. So Toya can't make it seem as if she only beef with Contessa when Contessa starts up. No, nah, y'all both be starting with each other. But girl, it is what it is. So all the ladies get to the house. I think it's funny that... Girl, wrong picture. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when I'm not paying attention. But both Mariah... Not Mariah... Yeah, Mariah. Mariah and Heavenly both came in blue. Okay. Now, at first, I'm like, because they want the same outfit, but they not. But they look like they could be. Okay. And I'm like, for them to not really like each other, they had the same idea. And it was funny because Mariah had like three outfits set out. And, you know, she was going to wear red, but she did not. She like, I don't want them to think I'm a devil. So she picked blue. Came looking like uh, um, Heavenly. So they get there. Jackie said she just wants it to be a discussion to where they can come together and discuss their issues or whatever and get things out on the table to get to a better place. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Now, she brought in a spiritual, uh, like, mediator lady who was on here. And I don't know what her name was, okay, but she had blue hair. You know, she had blue hair. Look, I was confused on if she purposely made her bottom lip be the same color as her um, eyelids. And left her top lip not that color. I was confused. I want her, either both her lips to be one color. I don't know. It. Could, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't like her lips. I. I. I don't. It, I think it's. It's team. It's team a lot. Okay. But I also don't know if she has really like her. Okay, I'm not sure. But let's move on. So you know. I feel like the whole thing. Nothing happened. Okay. They had little sticks. That had sands on the ends, like a little fan, and it had stuff on the ends. You would pick a fan, and it would say how you feel. Okay, so Mariah picked disappointed. She says, "I feel like I'm saying we are supposed to be friends, but we talk bad about each other all the time. You know what I'm saying? And we talk bad about each other without asking that person if whatever they heard or whatever they're saying is actually true. Of course, she's talking about Jackie or whatever. You know." And then the lady asked her, would you ever feel like that you'll be able to let that go, uh, you know, of how you feel disappointed? Well, she said, yeah, if people acknowledge it, if they acknowledge it, you know, sure. I'm like, okay, fam. And then <laughs> Emily said, well, how is she mad at Jackie for saying something that Kwa said first? And her issue is, again, she repeated something that she did not know was true. And then I asked Mariah, well, this is true. So what she said, it was what it was. Heavenly, no, Simone. Simone picks 
hurt and disappointed. She brings about she is hurt that she confided in a friend who then shared what she said in confidence. And so she is disappointed in that friend for, you know what I'm saying, not holding the information inside. Okay. Heavily picks that she is confused. I'm confused. You know what I'm saying? She brings up how, you know, someone... She says, no, anyone should not be able to speak on, no, don't speak on someone else's flaws until you speak on your own. I'm like, okay. That's, girl, okay. I was confused by her being confused. Toya picks up that she's disappointed. She says, I usually can fix things, in, but I feel like I'm stuck. She then started crying or whatever, and I feel like Toya's issue had more to do with her being sad about her miscarriage than anything going on with the ladies. And I feel like, but she couldn't say that because, again, she's not telling them that she had the miscarriage. Because she, she's not telling them that she had the miscarriage because she does not feel they're all close enough yet to disclose that information. She doesn't feel like they care about her enough. I think they do. I think if you told them that, that would probably bring everyone together because, I, I mean, it just would. Um, she brings up how she can't see herself. She's overwhelmed. And she says, and maybe she uses the word friend too loosely and she's crying or whatever and it's been a hard month for me or whatever but I'll it'll get better again her issue to me was more about her miscarriage than anything going on with the ladies true that's my opinion quad quad pulled 15,685 fans okay she pulled every fan and, and Jake said pick your top two okay pick your top two she then brings about she was disappointed that um, she was going through a lot with her ex, and she was treated bad for not being open. And then she started one on a long tirade of all these things, so long that it was a mono, It was like it, it was like speeded up, and you could tell she was talking for a long time and saying so. so and I'm like, oh, God, really? Can I say one more thing? Can I, can I say one more thing? You know what I'm saying? I, uh, no. Shut up. Okay. Quad talks so much. I don't know what her issue is. But the last thing that she brought up was, I just want to ask someone I was once close with if we can talk so we can get into a better place. And I want to ask Simone if you would, you know, meet with me or whatever. And Simone said, sure. So she sounded sincere. Like she was going to cry and all that. Like she really wanted her friendship back with Simone. So Simone said, Sure. Now, at that point, the tea was over. I, I, I was confused. I'm like, what just happened here? Like, was this, did, was it a meeting of the minds? Okay, if you say so. And I, I feel like no one really put on the table the issues they really had. But, however, Jackie did give all of them journals to write down what they felt about things, people, or whatever, but to not bring it up there. I'm looking like, why bring us together to not say what's really wrong to the person we have an issue with and tell us to write it down, I know it'll come up later and they'll they'll read out they'll out, read it out loud, they books or whatever, but I'm looking like, y'all just wasting some tea. Wasting my time. I digress. Mariah do say to Jackie after it was all over and uh, you know, I don't like how you repeated something that you did not know to be factual, whatever. I did not like that. You know what I'm saying? You are better than the person who started that lie. And Jackie, you know, acknowledges that Mariah feels that way. So, we then see Quad and Simone meet for dinner. Now, Simone got there at 7.45, okay? Quad did not get there until 8.45. Quad made it, Quad was an hour late. An hour late. And they told Quad, like, I think either last season or the season before last, that, you know, she is the most disrespectful when it comes to other people's time because she's always late as if whatever she has going on is more important than the ladies. And I'm like, first of all, I wish I would wait an hour. I get some on waiting because they was on, you know, it was, you know, it's call time or whatever. My thing is, I wouldn't, no, no. You're not going to hold me somewhere for an hour and then she get here. And Quan walked in, did not say sorry, did not say, oh, my bad. I didn't say, I was, she's walking, like, hey, okay, so let's talk about, let's, let's get to it. She's like, oh, so you walk in, just want to get down to it, this, this, this right off, no, right off the bat. The fact that she did not even say, sorry, I'm late, pissed me off. Pissed me off. Period. Okay? And so, she then said, well, girl, no, I don't have time for that. I gotta go to work in the morning. Bitch, so does Simone. She's a doctor. And if you if you have to be somewhere in the morning, why are you an hour late? You came in late, you could have been there. 
I digress. So she then brings up, you know, I just want to know why you treated me so badly last year at Heavenly's Crab Boil. And Simone said, what? Last year? And we, I'm like, that was a long time ago. And Simone, like, that was a year ago, whatever. I thought we came here to reconnect. I cannot believe I fell for her bullshit at the little tea thing where she seemed sincere and wanted to kind of rehash or not even rehash, but reconnect as French. She bringing up stuff that we've already discussed. It's kind of crazy. And she said, Quad, we talked about this last year. Like, we've, we've moved on past this. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we moved past this. Then, Quad then say, tell me again. Well, well, tell me, and I'm like, why, why, why you got an attitude? So watch, watch your attitude. What your attitude? I was so confused. Like it went from, it went from, I'm, I'm not here. I'm late. Now nah, I'm here. Let's talk. I got things to do. Well, I'm like, what? And she had a full fledged attitude. She was aggressive in my opinion or whatever. And Simone, like, girl, look, you can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me to tell you what I told you last year. Like that's not what I came to do. If you just calm down, because quiet again was on 10. 10 plus 2, if you ask me. Okay. Ah, uh, you can you you talk stuff and can't back it up. You can't back it up. I'm looking like, what where where did we go wrong? Okay, and so you know what, girl? I don't have to have it. I'm leaving. I'm saying, and then she gets when she leaves. You know, and she says to Saqua, you came here for a whole different purpose and idea. So I'm not. I'm leaving. And so she left. And as she left, Kwa then say, you're running because your ass is scared. Okay, because you have you have something to say about the behavior with your lying ass. I'm looking like, what? What just happened here? What just happened? What? Kwa. You don't even need to be on the show. I feel like this should be quiet last season. And not because she's divorced and no longer married to medicine. Because what's her purpose here? Quad's antics on the quad in this scene right here show how what Mariah has said about Quad is true. Quad is an actress and Quad gives you Quad she Quad is fake. Period. Quad is fake. Fake and fugazi, if you ask me. I'm not, and I usually like Quad, but how she came in, how she made Simone feel like, okay, we need to come together to have, to, to mend these fences. But Simone sits there and waits for you an hour late, does not say sorry, and then gets the attitude and bring up something that y'all discussed a while ago. <sighs> Quad, girl, go home. Fix your wigs and feed them dogs. And how to us in two more years. Anyway, y'all, that's the whole thing. Whatever. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.